Welcome back. Today we just want to focus on uh, what's basically going to happen in Parliament in relation to nominated members. We're focusing on the Senate. Today we're talking to Martha Wangari, who is a nominated Senate under the UDF party. Of course, she has been the UDF national treasurer. And right now, politician. Of course, well... Karibu. <laughs> welcome. Welcome. welcome to the Power Breakfast Show. Thank of course, you. we'd really want to, want to know who is Wangari? Martha Wangari. When your name appears, people think Martha it's, Wangari. it's, it's is it Karua. Karua? Yes. Because she's also Martha Wangari. <laughs> yes. So you're not Mother Karua? <laughs> At least I can confirm. I can ah, confirm. Yeah, <laughs> I can confirm <laughs> yeah. I'm not Martha Wangari Karua, but it's um, purely coincidental that yeah. we share the two names. But this Martha Wangari comes from Muranga, was born about 30 years ago in a place called Ruadia in Kangema constituency, Muranga County. Went to school there at the primary school, then proceeded to Kahuhia High School, then later to the University of Nairobi, where she did a BSc in statistics. Um, later did a postgraduate diploma in human resource from the Kenya Institute of Management. And um, yeah, basically that is it. How did you end up in politics? I would say it started a long time ago, but it was, uh, my leadership has been shaped along the way. But when I got to the university, I started to be student leadership. I was actually the first person to be the, a woman nominated and elected as the vice chair of the organization of Nairobi University Science Students in Chiromo. In my first year, I was the finance secretary. In my second year, I was the vice chair of the same organization. Later, I proceeded to be the sole vice chairperson in charge of academic affair, affairs. That was in 2007, 2006, 2007. I later went to campaign. I would say immediately after, before I even graduated, I landed uh, in Kibaki Tena campaign where I spearheaded the group Warembo Nakibaki, started the group. And oh, Warembo Nakibaki? Yes, yeah. that was, um, oh, okay. was campaigning for the president for his re election and was basically to get support from the young women across the country to support that the then sitting president. Mm. Yeah. And and course, very, uh, very, very interesting because you study statistics. Yeah. Um, <laughs> what have you? How have you used that <laughs> politics? I would say, I would say, what you do in school really, and especially your first degree, is basically to make you trainable, mm -hmm. and that is why you see people being absorbed. Even the deputy president was in Chiromo. He did botzu, yeah. <laughs> botany and zoology, mm -hmm. but you end up doing something else, maybe because of passion, mm -hmm. and that is where your passion lies, and you you get yourself into advocacy like I did, then went back to form the party, like you said, the UDF in 2011. Um, it started like a joke. It started like we are talking right, like right now, three or four people trying to come up with what do we do differently? Because we've been out there, made noise, tried to say, oh, this is what we want, tried to pick placards and make noise, but that is it. At the end of the day, if you are not in the system, then you cannot make the difference. So for us, we we, we consulted and decided that we need to plunge into the murky waters of politics and be active players, not passive, so that we can make the difference that we want to see and represent what we aspire to see in this country. That is what in inspired the formation of the party UDF. Um, maybe one year before it even came to be public that it's a political party, it started a long time ago, I think in the year 2010, then the official registration came 2011. Uh, we got our registration 1st uh, of August in 2011 before the enactment of the new Political Parties Act that made sure that all the parties were seeking fresh mandate. So we went back to register again. Mm -hmm. So it's been a long journey. Right. Just talking about uh, the fact that you also played a, you play, play a major role as far as UDF is concerned as the national treasurer. Yeah. In terms of the campaigns, uh, generally, how much did you spend and was it worth it? Um, I may not exactly put a figure, but uh, I would say we did not spend much because we did not have it. We actually relied on uh, people who contributed small bits of money every time now and then. Uh, we held uh, fundraisers, Pan-Africa, you'd hear us in Pan-Africa in Silver Springs, trying to talk to people who feel that they can make a difference in this country. So it was basically, you have a thousand shillings, I have a thousand shillings. And uh, the other good thing is that the political party's funding nowadays is actually in the public domain. 
if you go to the registrar of the political parties, you'll be able to see who are the people who started this party, how did we manage to push this party for the first one year of existence. It was through donations. You have a table you bring to the office. Someone says, I'll pay for your office for two months. I'll pay for your office for ca the counties for one month. And this is in the public domain. You can be able to see that uh, we did not have big money, first of all, because we did not have big names to be able to but push but but much money to the party, especially in the first year of establishment. That was 2011 to 2012. That is not actually what is believed by a lot of people. Yes. A lot of people know, and uh, for sure, because we used to interview those members of parliament. Yeah. They started about 50 members of parliament. Yeah. Of course, the fees sold out when TNA came. Yes. And your party was very much associated with the intelligence yeah. and the government. Yeah. In fact, it was said it is a government party yeah. planned for in, uh, uh, plan B mm -hmm. in case Uhuru and uh, others went to the Hague. So that was supposed to be, that's the way people understood. Yeah, so can I you think clarify that? It's all about yeah. perception and I think at times when we read what was in the media and watched people talk about UDF as they did, for us it was quite a shocker because having known the genesis and having known how much we have gone through to make sure that this party was able to be registered and had over 1,000 members in more than 30 counties in this country it was not an easy job. You could see us on Twitter, you could see us on, on uh, Facebook trying to raise money. We actually had even a short code try to raise money so that we can be able to stand independent and not be associated with any one specific person and everyone to own it. And that is why you see the membership of the party still remains very solid even after CNA came, there are those people who still believed in the party as an institution and not as a person. And the difference that we had is that we started the party long time ago before we even had any presidential candidate. I'm sure Mutegi would know that because the yeah. party was there a long time before yeah. we had even a presidential candidate. And everyone would ask, who is your presidential candidate? And mm. for us, what we wanted to build was an institution that can now support the individual when and not the other way around. When you say us, yes. it means who? It means... Ordinary Kenyans, basically, people who you don't know their fathers, like you would say, who is this Martha Wangari? Who is their mother? Where does she come from? And that is why you'll find people associating me with Martha Karua, maybe because we share a name. And in Kenyan politics, the way it is, people always have a name behind them. But these are people who you actually would not know. Someone like Muslim Adida from Isiolo, someone like Naisia Ekaria from Narok, someone like uh, Petronila Were from Busia, people you don't really can, cannot pinpoint where they come from. And there were young professionals, basically below 40 years. Um, and if you look even at the leadership, you'll see that uh, more than 60% is made of the young people, is made of the young people that, uh, that came together trying to get a way of making a difference in this country. All right. Uh, just, just basically looking at your transition from national treasurer to now nominated senator, yes. is this something that you expected? We worked really hard, and um, one thing we know that uh, the Political Parties Act, or rather the election laws, have given, especially the Kenyan young people, the, uh, the, the, the right or the chance to write an invoice prior. I would call it that way because normally young people are actually used out there, help people yeah. to step up, and we saw it in <laughs> 2007, yeah. and yeah. then later you're forgotten and you go to oblivion and you're actually you de disillusioned because you now wonder what do I do next but for this time round we were able to do the party list right before 45 days you submitted them 45 days to the election and having my name as number one I would say I expected it because I knew we would be able to garner a, a few members of the Senate like we did and we worked really hard we got two and uh, the same thing with the National Assembly we got about 12 members of the National Assembly and that is how even our chairman was nominated to parliament. So it, I would say it's something that we saw and worked really hard to achieve. Who your chairman is? Hassan Osman from Mandera County. Mm -hmm. All right. Yes. So now you're nominated Senate. What is your agenda? I think if you look at the role of the Senate, I think in Article 79 of the Constitution, you'll be able to, to see that, first of all, they are the people who hold the key to devolution in this country. The fights that we are seeing with governors and the county commissioners, all this legislation will be done by the Senate. And if this Senate was already sitting, you can be able to give way and give direction to how the devolution will be implemented. 
um, the statement that Kenyans made in 2010 of passing the new constitution should be respected to the letter. And I think the role of the Senate is to ensure that this devolution is not tampered with. And at the same time, we manage expectations because I think uh, the leadership of this time, the, the people who won the elections and those who are nominated this time, have a very tough task because, first of all, the, the expectations are very high from the Kenyan people and they are really informed. You cannot fool them anymore. Secondly, we are, making, we are setting up the structures as we go along. So it is not as easy as it was. You'll find, that, like Senate, we don't have even chambers to sit. We are sitting in KICC, and we have to do with what we have until we are able to. That is why the transition has been given five years, so that we are able to implement as we go along. But the role of the Senate, basically, is to make sure that the legislation is put in order. We will also be in charge of uh, county revenue allocation, that you can be sure that it will be tabled very soon in, the, in Parliament and in the Senate. So anything that touches counties will have to come to the Senate. And the speakers of the two houses, the upper house and the lower house, will have to decide which bill has an issue on the counties, and that is thrown back to the Senate. So I think the role of the Senate is clear, mm -hmm. and it's not as easy as it's made to sound, that it's just sitting and for the diaries like it has been described before. It is not, because I think there's a lot of work mm -hmm. for us to be able to to implement this constitution and ensure that we have peaceful, not only do we have devolution, but we have peaceful devolution, and it does not cause conflict, and the cohesion of the country is maintained. Now I'm looking at uh, the, the fact that you're one of the five people who yes. actually picked forms to be deputy speaker. Very ambitious indeed. Yeah, I, I had, um, well, it's ambitious, but it was well, well informed because um, I had a constituency that I was looking at. First of all, we are only 18 women in the Senate, all nominated, no one was elected. And uh, I was weighing the options of, uh, because no one had actually put application as a woman to be the Speaker of the Assembly, to be the Speaker of the Senate, I was looking at the possibility of being able to represent women, not only women, young women, to be the Deputy Speaker. But um, the issue of party politics has also, has also been shaped very much by the laws that we have. So Amani Coalition met in Naivasha and decided they had another candidate, which I respected and consequently withdrew my candidature. But unfortunately, we did not, we were not able to capture that seat. It went to Jubilee. That was uh, to Mweshimua Kembi Getura. And uh, for me, it was for the good of the party, for the good of the coalition, and for good of the country. But definitely, you can be expecting to see more of me there. Uh, a bit of a concern, because uh, just looking at Capital F FM News, March 26th, yeah. It says that you were disqualified after you failed to return your nomination papers. I was not really disqualified, but uh, I would call it, like I said, trading. Yeah. When Naivasha yeah. meeting decided, I had already mm, my so nomination papers okay. that were already signed, and I actually decided not to return them on that basis that I respect the decision mm. of the Amman coalition, and I consequently did not submit my papers. Mm. Yeah. Just looking at uh, perhaps your philosophy when it comes to leadership, I was just looking at your Twitter handle. Of course, you've said you had, yes. you have two. Yes. But if I focus on um, the one on Wang, uh, Martha Wangari 77, mm. yeah. uh, you have a profile, and, and you quote Robert Greene. Yeah. Uh, he has written this, The Art of War, yeah. uh, a book. And you say, do not put too much trust in friends. Yeah. Know how to use your enemies. Why did you decide on such a quote? <laughs> I think it's... Um, what would I call it? Uh, survival, maybe survival, because it, it, politics is mucky. And I will tell you because I've been there. But at the same time, it's, it's generally to, to, sh to, to inspire people to, first of all, read more, because there is so much literature out there that can help you shape your leadership. But um, it does not necessarily mean that I go out to use my enemies or to, <laughs> to lose my friends. It's just about uh, keeping people close. And I think that has been even demonstrated by the current government that we have. We have been not enemies really, but competitors that we have. We are seeing people extending hands, shaking hands. And I think for our country, that is a statement that we need to emulate. Because even if I lose and you win, and I lost with five million, votes and you won with six million votes. Th I still have the five million votes. So it is for us to shake hands and to, to keep everyone
close enough to be able to move forward. Right. Let's go back to UDF. Yeah. UDF for, formed by those people you call we who are not known anyway. Yeah. How did you identify Musari Mudavadi and uh, Jeremiah Kiyomi to be your, uh, your presidential okay. people, your candidates? I would first of all take you to even the membership of UDF. The way we started it and the papers reported it as clandestine <laughs> trainings. Yes, in some yes. I think in the Star, that's yes. how the story broke out to the, to the, to the nation. You did train a lot of people in most we countries. We did train a lot of people al around the country. Who was financing that? And uh, first of all, I, I was going to take you, Motegi, to the how. How do we decide yes. Motegi can be our member yes. and not Mwakazi? Yeah. For us, it was simple. It was to identify, recruit, then train. We first identify you and think you have something we like. And if you share the same principles of inclusivity, courage, and you can be able to move an agenda forward, then we talk to you. And if you're interested, we can be able to convince you and take you through a training session that was going for, I think, two or three days. Yeah, two and a half days to take you through several, several subjects, including groups, how do we survive with people, including the nation, how do we break with the past, that was our rallying call. How do we break with the past that we've had of fights of 2007 PEV? How do we move forward as a country? And I think that was the same thing that inspired us as we were looking for a presidential candidate. And we sent emissaries to actually be able to talk to uh, several people. And they landed on Mueshimua, the former DPM, Musalia Mudavadi, and he became our presidential candidate. Mm. Perhaps so what is that one thing that you'd want to leave behind as a legacy? let's say after your term ends in parliament well i would i would not say that i would want to i would want to continue to serve first of all but i would want to be remembered as that one person that moved to be able to include everyone in governance and also to implement devolution that is very key and not only devolution but peaceful devolution that we are able to transit from what we had before to what we need, to, what the constitution stipulates, without having fights and without going overboard, pushing interest of personal personal nature. What is the future of UDF? UDF is still uh, is still <laughs> a party, and it will continue. It's still continuing to to even invite other members on board, and uh, as legislators that are nominated by the party, will continue to advance what the party stands for. And you can be sure that in the next five years we'll still b be back to the field, uh, to the field of politics, to field candidates for positions. Mm. Right. P perhaps uh, you know, apart from uh, the quote from Robert Greene, yes, I think yes. it's, it's actually from uh, the Forty Eight Laws yeah. of Power. Yeah. Um, just looking at your tweets, you actually retweeted yeah. uh, this particular quote on the fifteenth of March mm. uh, that was written by At Makodingo. Yeah. Uh, I'm not happy about Uhuru's win. Yeah but I shall not hate on Kikuyus and Kalenjins because of it. We are all suffering Kenyans. And you talked about bringing people together. Well, that statement is very clear. Uh, if you retreated it, then uh, is it true? In it. it is very true because at the end of the day, and I think uh, I've been involved in a lot of inter-ethnic forums even before I joined UDF. And uh, even if we are 42 tribes in this country, we have to work together. At the end of the day, if you don't have food, it does not matter whether you are Kikuyu. It does not matter. We've seen Kikuyus suffering, having jiggers and not going to school. We have seen Luo suffering. suffering. We have seen Kalenjin suffering. For me, it's about sitting down and realizing if you fight because of two people who, again, have a cup of tea and share a laugh, then what do we have to gain as Kenyans? I think it's all for us to embrace each other and realize that uh, as our president has kept on saying that it's a competition, it's not a fight. At the end of the day, life has to move on. And for me, and even the, the committees that I'm looking at, even in the Senate, I'm looking at the joint committee between the National Assembly and the Senate of national cohesion, because I think our country needs this a lot, so that we avert anything that can lead us to 2007 scenario again. And this will have to be done mostly by the young generation of this country, because it doesn't matter, Mokazi, where you you can be married to a Kikuyu, and it's us who are doing the She's married to a Meru. Oh, yeah, I, I guess, right. So it is us to make sure that we protect our children, it's because, like, now your kids will be what? Will not be <laughs> Thai Kikuyus, will yeah. not be Thai Merus, or, <laughs> you know? So it is for us to, to, 
to, to actually do a joint effort. And it's a personal decision that I've made. That it does not matter whether you're Luo, whether you're Kikui, whether you're Kalenjin. At the end of the day, we are Kenyans. And the, the, the problems that we have really are not so different. The problems in Moranga are not so different from the problems in Tana River. It is the same. We lack basic needs. And that is what we need to push for this country to be able to move forward. Mm. That we are cohesive and we are able to forge a way forward. Mm. Would you say that uh, you are going to UDF uh, was as a result of your frustration after uh, campaigning for the president, <laughs> former president Kibaki, Warembo uh, Kwavijana, Warembo Kwa Kwanini, Warembo Kwa Kwanini, Kibaki. I would not call it frustration. Uh, but you, 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 what did you get? I would not call it frustration. First yes. of all, what I got is that my president was re-elected. And I think for me that was a plus because I believed in him. And uh, after f those five years from 2007 to 2012, I think we've made great strides. So for me that was pl a plus enough. The fact that you can stand out there and talk about the president, the democratic space that has been created by the, president Ki the former president Kibaki cannot be equaled with any other in the continent. And I think for me that is a plus enough that we are able to express ourselves. I'm able to go out there and look for jobs without fearing that I'll be told you're a Kikuyu, you don't. But um, I, I actually get where you're coming from, that uh, I went to support another person because yeah. I supported my own person. But I think that is definitely not how it is. And I think I've suffered that bit from even my home, where you seem to be going against the grain. But I think it's 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 good for our democracy that you're able to support someone from a different region and you stand for it and you are not seen to fight anyone and um, i think that has been a plus for our country right perhaps as we come to an end of course uh, the nominated positions in parliament were set to basically cater for the representation of women yes. people with disabilities and special interest groups you have been nominated of course from the women's perspective yeah. what is the future of basically changing the mentality of Kenyans to begin to look at women as leaders and women who actually can take this country to the next level of excellence. Just like is, is the, what the question, no woman has been elected. Absolutely, a governor. senator. I think it, we, are, we still have a long way to go and uh, the statistics cannot lie because no governor has been <laughs> elected as a woman and no senator has been elected as a woman and even at the counties it's still a worrying scenario. But I think uh, by having the, the, the laws that are governing elections, the new laws, the Political Parties Act, the Elections Act, the Constitution, I think we are making strides because these now would be able to be implemented in the parties until we have that bottom approach so that we don't wait until there are 20 men, now let's nominate women, until we are able to make sure that we implement it from the political parties. And we give political parties teeth like it's supposed to be you know, like it's supposed to be done, then we'll be able to make sure that we have affirmative action right from the bottom up so that we don't have to wait until there are no women and nominate them. But I think even as women, we still have a lot to do to be able to mentor. Uh, and we were doing something with my friends another day and we realized, even if we say we want women to be elected, someone will come and say, but offer yourself. First of all, offer yourselves. And I think that is what has been fighting us. We need to have a mentorship program that brings the girl child to actually believe that I can be a leader. That way when they get to my age and when they get older, they'll be able to offer themselves for the positions without being told you go for the women rep because I think that is what most of them have <laughs> suffered. So we've seen very strong women going for just the women rep because it's the affirmative, part, party posi it's the affirmative position that they have been offered. But affirmative again is corrective. It's not for forever. So with time and we need to be patient and push it at the same time, we'll be able to get a level ground for women and men. Right. Yeah. Very thanks indeed. Martha Wangari, Hi. nominated senator under the UDF party. We'll be right back. Thank you so much. Thank you. Very well. Thank you.